Welcome to Memory Cube. This video is about speedruns and how they can help you become a master of your knowledge. I wonder what this switch does. Hmm, speed? Okay, now I'm supposed to travel to the event dates as quickly as I can. In this video, I will introduce the concept of mastery and why playing speedruns from time to time is not just about getting your name on a leaderboard, it's also about refining your memory. If you're not the fastest gamer in the world or even in your team, speedruns are still an incredibly useful tool to go from being able to recall things to just knowing things. And yes, there is a difference and this difference is significant. If you enjoy our content about memory training, how to become more knowledgeable with little effort, don't forget to like and subscribe. Sprox's history quiz has plenty of memory aids in it. It asks you to come up with highly memorable stories it finds out what your personal leeches are, that is, the dates and facts that you find impossibly hard to remember. It tells you when you review things so that you strengthen your memory. But as it turns out, being able to retrieve things is not quite the same as knowing things. The way we get a piece of knowledge into our mind is usually the way that it comes back out again. But that is not always useful, let's say, you have a humorous image to remember that the Battle of Waterloo was in 1815. In the major system, the year translates to, for example, Daffodil. So now you have the Napoleonic army charging at the thin red line, only to have daffodils being thrown at them. When someone comes along and asks you when the Battle of Waterloo was, you can go back to this imagery. You might get it right. You associate the daffodils, you decode it back to 1815, and there's your answer. If you get a bit of practice, you might even do this quickly. But the problem is, unless you're a pupil and you sit some assessment, hardly anybody ever seems to be interested in the answer to this question in isolation. A knowledgeable person would be able to associate this battle with the context of its time, with the literature that was written around the date, music that was composed, inventions that were made, or simply the chronology of political events in Napoleonic times. To tell an ad hoc story, you have to have these dates at your fingertips. You can't just try and remember everything you know about the time and then busily decode the dates and then order them chronologically. You want the dates to pop into your mind. 1799, Napoleon takes power. 1804, Napoleon crowns himself emperor. 1805 Trafalgar, 1812 the Russia campaign, 1814 Elba, 1815 Waterloo, and then 1803 Beethoven's third. Beethoven was a big fan of Napoleon and actually named the symphony after him. When he found out that Napoleon had crowned himself emperor, he renamed the symphony Eroica, the heroic symphony. And then 1799 Nicola Volta who was also close friends with Napoleon, invented the battery. Mastery means that your subconsciousness feeds your thought process with facts. You can consciously focus on telling a story or making a point, on writing an essay, debating an opinion. And whatever you need for that just effortlessly appears in your mind. If your knowledge is encoded in a mind palace, you have to engage consciously in the decoding process. You will find it harder to focus on what is important and you will fall short of being a full master of this knowledge. What can we do about that? If it's true that the way you put a piece of information into your memory is the way that you get it out again, you will have to re-encode the information without the decoding step necessary. Your subconsciousness can then retrieve it all by itself. Speedruns are the perfect mechanism to practice this. Watch me having a go at this speedrun. You will notice that I have trained myself to not even think about the question. My eye catches the question, the information circumnavigates the brain and directly goes into my fingertips. You can see your personal best, your team's best and the world best before Spock starts his countdown. You can't use hints and there are no context questions and speedruns. All you focus on is your quick mental retrieval of the event dates. It is faster to enter the years in the pocket calculator rather than swipe. 
I'll speed this up to get to the end of the speedrun. Only three more questions to go. Speedruns are the most intense part of this game. Oh wow, new world record. I've earned a huge amount of chromium as well. Let's go back to the menu. Playing speedruns changes the quality of how you know things. I've put the links to two brilliant books, Memory Code and Memory Craft, into the description. The great memory champion Ling Kelly, author of these books, has encoded tons of knowledge in memory palaces that she has created on walks in the areas she lives in. She describes how associations jump out vividly on her walks. And this is great. It is a nearly mystical form of knowledge where the creatures you created in your mind come to life and whisper in your ears. A lot of the knowledge we have is perfectly well placed in memory palaces and in donkey bridges. But if you just want to know something, like you just know the year you were born in, or what day Christmas Day is, you need to stop relying on these creatures and train your subconsciousness to supply you with the facts and not the association. This is everything for today. I hope you have found this video useful. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe.